Yo, 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 mic check. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, who is this? I came to pay a little visit, my flow is exquisite. They talking that bullshit like I can't hear you, who is it? Ah, uh, ah, uh, I got the money on the phone, now nah, I don't need a loan, leave my ass alone. If you ain't got a check, I'd rather sleep watching TV. <laughs> Welcome to the Donkey Show, another episode. Same guy, same host. I haven't got fired yet, so I'm good. <laughs> Today we got uh, the mentor and mentee connection. We got Robert Hodge and we got Lamont French together. Thank you, I really appreciated y'all joining us today. I know y'all busy men with busy about, schedules, so about. appreciate it. We're actually talking, it was funny because we were talking about divorce court after, before this and it was just, it's a hilarious Man. Thing. Today I seen a scenario where the guy said he wanted to get divorced, but right afterwards he proposed to her. So <laughs> did, were you really walking in to get divorced, or it was like you were trying to just bully your way into getting well, engaged? A lot of times they don't know the issue not even that big. They just need the, the judge, like the counselor. Like All you she need says, to do is like sit and talk, right? divorce. Yeah, like why you just don't sit down and talk? Go to therapy. Like what? So yeah, I, again, let me uh, emphasize the importance of saying thank y'all so much for joining us. Uh, I really appreciate it. it means no, man, we honored to be here, man. This is an awesome show, man. This is what's up, man. The Donkey Show. I'm proud of you, boys, man. Appreciate how it. you do it, man. Yeah, man. So Pushing let's get started culture, for y'all. How did y'all? How did this link up happen between both of y'all? You want to tell the story? I let him. I let him tell him, man. He's a great okay. storyteller, man. Right. Um, so uh, I became a professional artist probably, probably maybe about four and a half years ago. And it's funny because I met him, but he didn't know that I had met him. So uh, we were out at the flat. I was out at the flat with a friend of mine, and then uh, and she knew a guy that's one of his good friends, uh, uh, Three Bubble and Jay Gray. Um, and uh, one of those guys knew the girl that I was out with, and we kind of we kind of met in crossing or whatnot. But I had knew who he was, and so I had been a fan of his for like maybe probably about four years and um i had a, a solo gallery at h mac and a guy who bought one of the paintings out of there he he was opening up a restaurant uh maba Pan, what is it pan asian pan, yeah. Ameri pan yeah. american uh um bistro on west gray and uh i was installing my piece and then he was coming up there and he was installing his uh he had like maybe two or three pieces and um i kind of introduced myself you know i had a kind of a uh I felt like a dork. I had a dork moment, like, hi, Robert. Yeah, Hodge, yeah, yeah. I know who you are. You know, it was kind of one of those moments. But uh, um, I, I had asked him if I could, you know, come by his studio and just kind of pick his brain and and um, and and really just learn and be around. And he was like, yeah, you know, that, that's fine. I, you know, I thought he was gonna blow me off. You know, he's Robert Hodge, world-renowned artist. You know, from Houston. But um, uh, the ironic thing to me was he called me before I called him back. We exchanged numbers and probably about two weeks later, um, he had he had hit me and was like, hey, what you doing? Come by the studio. You know, I'm in the studio working or whatever. And uh, I went by there and, um, you know, we chopped it up. And his biggest thing was like, you know, uh, you know, if you want me to be your mentor, all I ask is that you just show up. You know, when you, you know, when, when you say you're gonna show up, you know, just be around. And I was like, that's the easy part. And, um, and yeah, that ain't easy. A lot of people think they want to do something and their commitment to it is very minimal. Like when oh, it gets yeah. rough or hard, then you don't see them. Yeah, you know? of course. I mean, we've talked a lot of times, uh, me and Lamont. Man, you, the other, you, you have it simple. It's just show up. You get what I mean? Yeah. It's the other part is just going to, you get what I mean? Because you already like it, right? If you like it, you're going to show up. Yeah. Man, put the effort. You get the what effort. I mean? I mean, but, I, I knew, I knew, I knew he had talent. I saw the work, but I wasn't really focused on that because I was focused on integrity and being consistent. Because that's that's all the two things you really gotta have, you know. Because talent is subjective. You know how I feel about somebody painting is only my opinion. You know, I might love something, you might hate it, but what makes somebody elevate is being consistent and doing it and, and like owning, you know, and learning and being humble. I mean, that's the wide road. So anyway, when he was saying that he wanted to hook up, I was like. Yeah, bro, because you don't get that a lot of visual art. It's not like music, you know, people, that's way more flashy. This is something that, that's a lot of labor involved. Yeah. It's usually by yourself in the studio. So to have somebody that understands what you're doing in the studio can help. You always want that. Because otherwise, I'm in there by myself. 
You Question know? for you. So we lack mentors nowadays. Honestly, yeah. it's just it's it's a lot. It's and especially the art world. It's an industry where it's like absolutely it's very prideful, right? Yeah. So why do you do it? Because I didn't have one. Because I went through the same thing he did. Like I had people who I went up to to say, "Hey, I da 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 da," and I got shit on pretty much. You know, it was just like no communication, and so it's like it's like it's always that way in life. You know, it's I don't know. It's weird. It's kind of like growing up with a father or growing up like with an abusive father. Like either you're going to be an abusive father or you're going to be the best father in the world. And so because I have a mentor, I was like, man, when any, whenever anybody needs me or hit me up, I'm going to be there. And, it, and the only thing that's going to stop that relationship if they don't come through on what they need to do because I'm going to be there. But, you know, it's a two-way street. And so um, I got mentors now, which is weird, but at that time when I needed it, it was nobody I can really like, you know, only from afar. I would just I would just study artists' work and say, okay, I like that and put it together, but not like personally in my life. I could call and say, hey, I need to do this. What should I do here? You know. So. So what is your thought process now? Now that you've gotten to where you're at and you're like, okay, now the mentors are there. What like what is your thought process through that? Like is, uh, what does your mind go through? Because like, where were you? Like, no, exactly. About that. We talked about that. I could be like, nah, bro, I don't need it no more. You know, kind of move around, but I'm not like that because. I know the world. The world is ultimately a shallow place. I mean, when you're an artist, most of the time you live in the deep end of the pool. So I look at things and I think, I think about things very deeply, but American culture is shallow. So a lot of people don't want to be associated with you until you prove some kind of value to them, you know? Yeah, correct. It's almost like when people ask you, what did you do? That's almost like a gauge of how they're going to respect you. And so I just never, I wasn't like that. I mean, I, I don't. I don't care if he didn't have not one show. I mean, it's not about that. You know, we artists and we in this thing together. That's the kind of how, that's my mentality with things. I don't go in a hierarchy kind of ego kind of basis. And the know, things so. that he's allowed me to be exposed to, I mean, they go beyond as far as painting and actually making the work. You know, he's shown me, uh, you know, when an uh, art gallery can screw you over, you know, he's allowed me to see the the things that you got to go around and the things that you have to kind of look out for on the business end of it, too. Um, and not just that, but also to having all your ducks lined up in a row, you know, to apply for grants and also to to submit work to different galleries to already have your work documented. Just the little um, nuances uh, of the business side to be a successful artist. Anybody can, I think, say that they want to be an artist on the front end making the work that's the that's the fun part because you know you you're getting to express yourself but as far as being successful and and actually having notoriety and respect in the art culture um you know there's other things that you have to do as far as dotting the i's and crossing the t's and he's allowed me to see those things so i always tell him i you know i appreciate him for that that day that you decided that you wanted a mentor or whatever it is the conversation was i'm being mentor this and that Lamar, what made you be like, this is the guy for me, or this is what I want to move forward with? I want him to guide me and help me. Um, just because of um, his work, you know, what his work stood for uh, and, and the, the, the messages that it had um, within his work and how, how strong and powerful it was uh, on a lot of different levels. Um, <clears throat> the, the, he had an installation um, at HMAC that I saw um, to where he created a real uh, a real a real estate company and he built uh, these little uh, shotgun homes within the museum and it was about gentrification and that's when that's I was, dope. and that's when I was like yo I gotta I, I gotta meet this guy because I had already seen some of his actual paintings some of his work or whatnot but also too the stamp that he had put on the culture here in the city in the museum district in third ward and east downtown I mean his you know his his name was um you know, it was it was prominent, and um, you know, I'm not a person who, uh, you know, I'm not a person who who shies away, you know, from from the top, you know. So it's kind of like, if I was a rapper and I bumped into Jay Z, Jay Z, I'm gonna ask him, hey, you know, can I pick your brain? Can I hang around or whatever? I yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the worst thing he can say is no. I think this is important because for any artist that's watching that's trying to get into the art world or the art scene in Houston. It's important to know that it's important to ask questions, right? You're yeah. not going to get the answers yeah. if you don't ask the questions. So Also, not, not assuming that, that you know somebody based off of, off of social media presence and persona. Because, you know, we both assume certain things thing, because, yeah. you know, yeah, how yeah. the social media can 
makes this thing super larger than life. And um, it's just as simple as saying, hey, man, <laughs> yeah, can I pick your brain? Can I come out of the studio? Can I do a studio visit? Like I say, man, being a visual artist is a lonely life, man. Usually it's just, like I say, it's me in there. People think they want to hang out to get <laughs> about an hour into it, and I'm not talking yeah. to them when I'm in the painting. They're like, yeah. well, all right, man, I'll holler at you later. <clears throat> and so, yeah, man, so, like, yeah, we all need that to have people around that understand what's going on. And you, I learned, I learned stuff from him too, man. So it's a, it's a give and take, man. So it's all good. How was it for you on your, on your journey? How has it been coming to where you're at right now? It's been a, it's been a, it's been a Texas cyclone. That's what I call it. It's been a, it's been a roller coaster ride. And if people don't know what the Texas cyclone is, <laughs> oh, one of the dopest rides. One of the dopest rides. That Astro World. You know, it's, it's one of Astro World's prime. It used to be one of Astro World's prime in their rides, but it was raggedy as hell. It was like the first roller coaster, but somehow. Yeah. For, first of no, all, but it still kept it together. It still kept it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But y'all have said Astro World. Some of these kids don't even know. I know, Astro which I bless your heart that we had a theme the park. parking for the rodeo. Yeah, it's now <laughs> Astro World. That, that used to be Astro Let's do a moment of silence for yeah. those who don't know. We're good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it was riggedy. You know what I'm saying? You on it, you think you gonna die, but you not. And that's what the art world is like, man. Sometimes it's really it's a it's a it's a real high extreme. You're like, yeah, then you go super low, like, oh no. And so I mean I love it, man. This, this is what I chose to do. So for me it's just figuring out that's how what we do. You know, they get that balance of personal life and then like career life. I know you're into music a lot, so Absolutely, yeah. Would it start with art first or was it It started music with music first? for art was my first love, but even even though I went to, I went to uh, HSPVA here, it's the high school for performing visual arts. But even after I graduated, I didn't I didn't really see how I could make a living off art because it was really because I didn't really have a mentor. Like you know, everybody was telling me, "Hey, man, it's going to be a teacher, be a professor." And there wasn't not the opportunity. Yeah, right, so. and so music just seemed like that way to get that that kind of money and momentum you needed. And when I started figuring things out, I realized they both can work side by side. But there is a career in art that, is, that you can, you know, make a living. So, but yeah, it's, I think they both now, they, they're both neck and neck. So I use them now as the same kind of platform to tell different stories. But for a while, music was winning and then art was winning. And so it was a really, it wasn't balanced, but now I think I got it figured out. So I kind of work on like, you know, two day jobs, you know. <laughs> How do, have y'all ever done anything together, work together? We was just talking about that. Yeah, not yet. We working on something now. This That'd will be, be the year. This will be the year. Oh, so this will be the year where it happens? Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's funny because I met him a year ago, almost a year ago to the date, like a week ago. So we selling by anniversary? Nah. No? <laughs> that's that's not weird. Not just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds so weird. <laughs> it's all right. It happens. It happens, man. <laughs> Lamar, what would you just say is the most, for you, the most impactful thing you've learned from him? Um... The most impactful thing, you know, it's funny, uh, just because, you know, talking to him, he was out of town one time, and, uh, you know, did, can I say it? I mean, he was kind of complaining. No, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was kind of complaining, and, you know, I was basically like, man, you Robert Hodge. Like, I don't, like, don't want to hear none of that. This is what we do. And that became our motto, you know, so it's just that this is what we do. You know, no matter what else is going on, this is this is what we do. We are artists in every sense of the word. You know, we're engulfed in the culture, so it's up to us to continue to push it in every way that we can. Through stresses, through everyday life, at the end of the day, this is what we do. It kind of became my motto too. You know, so it kind of helps me because, yeah, this is what we do, but still, you as an artist, you can be put in some really... Um, some really tight situations, man. Not even due to yourself, just doing, just to, by other people being unprofessional. Yeah. And so that me having that model, this is what we do, helps me to push through circumstances that maybe I, I will walk away from. Because ultimately I do things for the culture too, man. So of course we gotta provide for our families and it's my career, but like I said, some things are just not right, man. And, and so I always, I always say I complain, I want them to see the real side of what's happening out here. Because, you know, you're not safe because you because you got a museum or you're in a museum show. You're not safe, man. Yeah. And you always have to protect yourself and know what's going on, whether it's which, a gallery, a museum, or whatever. Which is, I mean, that's the dope part about having a mentor. You kind of put them through everything. It's rare when mentors put you through everything. You're gonna they yeah. slowly. Some mentors just bring you slowly through it. Yeah. You kind of just brought them through it. Well, hey, I want to be transparent. I, it, you know? I don't got time, man. Like we don't got like the, the culture moving so fast now. 
just because of social media, how the world is moving, it's so fast that I, I don't want to baby. This is a grown man. I'm not going to baby. No, you're going to see what's happening. I just removed the curtain completely. Yeah, so yeah, you can yeah. really decide if you want to do this because this is, this is what's happening even on this end of the art world. Like, it's happening, man. You got to protect yourself. Do y'all think in the art world, the art scene y'all in, do y'all think this lacks the mentor and I think so. Yeah. Studio. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. I, I travel a lot. I mean, a lot of artists and a lot of people are really close and really everything is to the chest because they have a fear of you stealing their practice, like stealing how they do certain things or whatever the fear might be. It's all kind of fears. But the thing is, I, you know, I'm a spiritual person. Man. I know what's for me is for me and what's for him is for him. So I can give him everything I got because he's yeah. not taking nothing away from me. And some people think you're going to take something away from them, and that's impossible. And most people are Hollywood. When you get to the point to where you want to be a professional artist or that's actually what you're doing, they feel like, okay, I can't, what can I learn from somebody else? They don't, you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's so much more than just painting, making paintings and making work. It's so many other different things. You know, like in music, I see why they have artist development. You know what I mean? Because there's so many other things than just actually making the music. It's, you know, presenting yourself, knowing how to network. And um, a, a big thing uh, that I've learned from his, him is to, um, is to respect every artist in, in, on every level. Don't, you know what I mean? You know, the, what I've learned in the art world is that a lot of artists, they, they kind of hate on each other. Or you know they'll talk talk bad about each other, but that's 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 something he's like I don't talk bad about no artist or, or what they hustle is. It's hard out here, man. That's not that's not fair. That's whack to, to think that you on some special island platform because you do a different work. Yeah. Like you know, no man. Whether you do like this thing of fine art, or you a pop artist, or you graffiti, or you whatever, man. Like it's all the same thing. So when I hear artists like talking about somebody because they don't like what they do, I think that's whack because that's just it's just whack, man. Like, you know, you know the struggle you go through, so why would you do that, man? Yeah. <laughs> it just, you know? But I'm saying, that those are fears that my third eye just opened that I know what that's about. It's not about the other artists. It's about themselves. So I just watch, man, you know? I wanted to give this moment for all the viewers so they can learn something who's trying to come up in the art scene. Right. If, from both of y'all's perspective, what is something that y'all would give advice, you as learning and you as giving him the lesson how what would y'all teach what would y'all tell the people to pick up on what i tell a young artist a young creative correct um to to educate yourself to study and i don't i don't mean by i don't mean going to an expensive art school i mean reading biographies on artists that you love uh watching documentaries um you know showing up because okay for instance i go to different cities and i mean young artists and I realized they don't know any artists in the city. They don't go to any arts organizations. They don't go to shows. So I find myself introducing these artists who live in that city to artists in their city. And I'm like, man, you should be embarrassed that I came from a different city and I'm putting you on in your own city because they don't show up. So yeah. you gotta be active. So you, if you wanna do something, I don't care if you wanna be a DJ, then you gotta show up to the clubs. You gotta talk to DJs, go to conferences, man. Like be active. Don't sit in your studio and just be in your head, making this amazing work and then not networking because without the networking part, I mean, you out of there. Um, for me, it just be, it would be, don't ever feel like you, you're in a place where you can't learn something. Um, and be genuine, you know, just be genuine about it. You know, you look at, um, you know, Andy Warhol was Basquiat's mentor, uh, you know, um, you know, it got to a point to where there was a rift because Basquiat felt like he couldn't learn anything from Warhol anymore. Um, you know, but don't ever feel like you're at a point to where you can't learn anything. I think that's badass advice. I feel inspired right now. <laughs> and I'm like, shit, I need to get on something. You get what I mean? But I, you know, and I think for me, my advice was. At this moment, Bentley Flores decided to answer his own question. It kind of ruined the great moment, so we're deciding to cut this part out. What is something we should be looking uh, forward to this year coming from y'all? Individually, whether it's together, it'll matter. Let um, the people know. So I've been working on this album called Two and a Half Years for almost two years now. So this year, the new vinyl will be dropping with five new songs. And I got two more records are coming out. So not even on the visual art side, these music projects are kind of visual art to me. They're, they're kind of like, you know, um, limited edition art pieces. 
So I went to San Antonio and did a residency with Art Pace, and I'm dropping a record called Between the Devil and the Deep coming out. And the Station Museum here locally, uh, the Station Contemporary, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's right, right, yes. right downtown. I did a record with them called uh, Friendly Fire, and that's dropping this year too. So um, besides that, I'm not really doing anything like locally here. I'm just making work and sending things out in the world. So I'm out in LA and New York a lot. And just but, know Don the Donkey Show is behind you. We support man, you. Man, and I love y'all, man. Local, donkey. Man, behind you. A lot of stuff that happened for me last year in general was because Donkey, man. I love, yeah. I love his spirit, man. He got that spirit of generosity, man. And, if everybody was like him, man, this world would be a lot better with artists, man, because like I say, he 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 lives that. You're not taking nothing away from me. I got yeah. an opportunity. I'm gonna put I'm gonna plug you in if I believe yeah. in you, man. So I appreciate that. He's solid, always. He always sure. you know straight up. What he says he's gonna do, he's gonna do. So yeah, a little donkey. Yeah, so, yeah, Mark, what you got? Um I got my big show, um, my solo exhibit in November, November third. And then I got another one, uh, December fifteenth. So um, you know, if I can work some in, uh, you know, before then. I'll definitely let y'all know. But November 3rd, December 15th, yeah. those are two big shows. Uh, me and him talked about uh, doing a sculpture together, big sculpture. Uh, we're going to put together uh, like a chess board where it's going to tell a story. So It's amazing. Already sounds dope. I'd like to thank y'all gentlemen for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. It. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I thank y'all completely, and it's been an honor to interview both of y'all. Yeah, yeah. Together. No yeah. So it's, it's pretty dope. Yeah. So appreciate thank it, man. Y'all. Appreciate no, thank it, man. You, man. Thank, thank you, man. Glad to meet you. Thank you to the donkey. Yes, definitely. Yeah, man. Peace. Peace. Now a word from one of our sponsors. This is Aaron Rogers with Roger Silvera here on The Donkey Show, uh, busting your copyright myths. So you may have heard that if you sample music or a piece of a film or some artwork, that there is a certain amount you can get away with. And I've heard everything from three seconds to seven seconds to 30 seconds. The truth is you need to license it no matter what amount of seconds you're using. In the United States, there's no excuse not to license right now. Um, there have been lawsuits over three notes that have been lost. So be cautious, go ahead and get the license. There is no magic number of seconds. Don't be, 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 don't be